Thank you again for joining us on this lovely Monday afternoon. My name is Alex DiGiorgio, Public Engagement Manager for East Bay Community Energy, EBCE. Today, we will be discussing the transition of residential electric accounts to 100% renewable energy in the fine cities of Albany, Dublin, Hayward, and Pleasanton. We'll begin today by providing some basic background info about East Bay Community Energy, and we will summarize the options available to electricity customers within these cities. We will then walk through the steps customers can take to choose which electricity option they prefer. And then lastly, we'll take questions from those tuning in and we'll answer those in the order received. I do have some EBC colleagues on the line with me today. And so we'll be doing our best to answer all your questions in real time. Please feel free to type in those questions in the chat tool that you see on your screen. And of course, you can also hold your questions till the end. There's a good chance we'll, we'll be covering um, the, the question that you may have during the course of the presentation. So um, feel free to put those questions in the chat or just hold off until the end when we get to the Q&A part of the presentation. And with that, I will move us along. So some basics. What is East Bay Community Energy? So EBCE is the local power supplier for residential and commercial electricity customers in Alameda County, its cities, and the city of Tracy in neighboring San Joaquin County. So our mission is to provide more renewable energy at lower rates and to reinvest revenues back into our communities to create local jobs, administer energy-related customer programs, and generally to catalyze sustainable development. Technically speaking, EBCE is a joint powers authority. So this is a local government agency that's created by the cities and counties that we serve. So as I mentioned before, Alameda County, all of its cities and the city of Tracy and San Joaquin County. You can think of EBCE as similar to a school district, only instead of providing public education, we provide a public option for energy that's administered at the local level. And today we're going to talk about what those options are in more detail. So first, it's important to note all EBC customers remain PG&E customers for everything except the source of the energy. EBC procures more renewable energy from natural resources like wind and solar. And these resources are then delivered through PG&E's lines and wires to customers. These two services, power generation and power delivery, are actually billed separately on your PG&E bill, and we'll review a sample bill together um, a little later in a few minutes. Uh, but in short, PG&E continues to handle all billing services and to maintain the electrical grid, while EBCE provides customers with more energy choices at lower rates. And so we will discuss what those choices are. I do want to note that EBC does not provide any gas services. We're just in the business of, of electricity and, and primarily renewable electricity. So to those options, when EBC began providing service, which was in 2018, we're a fairly young agency, there were three options available. And these options are summarized as follows. There's the bright choice option, which offers more renewable energy at lower rates than PG&E standard service. There was the brilliant 100 option, which was an option that offered carbon-free energy at price parity with PG&E standard service. And there was renewable 100, which was an option that offers 100% renewable energy from California-based wind and solar and that's offered at a premium of one penny per kilowatt hour um, more than standard rates. And to speak in just lay terms, that's about $5 more per month for the typical home in our service area. However, these options have changed somewhat, which is one of the reasons why we're here today. Uh, in response to the rising costs of hydroelectric resources uh, during the historic drought in the West, EBCE's board voted to close the Brilliant 100 option to new customers and to have it sunset entirely by the end of 2021. So that brings us to today, it's no longer available. So as a result, 
starting in January of this year, EBCE customers now have two options with EBCE. We have Bright Choice, which again, it features a 1% rate discount and a minimum of 5% more renewable energy than PG&E's standard service. And then there's Renewable 100, which offers 100% California-based wind and solar for about $5 more per month um, than pg and &E's standard service. And then of course, the whole point of community choice energy is for customers to have options that they didn't have before. So not only do you have now a, a more cost competitive option, but you also have a 100% renewable option. And if you prefer to continue to um, purchase your energy from PG&E's energy supply portfolio, you're welcome to do so. And you can opt out of EBCE service and you'll, you will be served um, for both your energy delivery and your energy generation by pg &E and and PG&E's resources. And we will go over on, on how to make that selection in just a few minutes. So what is a default service? Each, each city council gets to decide within EBC service area, uh, gets to decide what the default service is within their jurisdiction. I should mention by state law, which would be AB 117, EBCE is the default power supplier for customers within our service area. So in Alameda County, all its cities, the city of Tracy, EBC is the default provider of electric generation service unless folks choose to opt out. That's, that's by state law. Uh, so I know this is a, a bit of a busy slide here, but the takeaway from it is that different cities had different default options with EBCE. Um, and in some cases, it was Bright Choice, such as in Dublin, and in other cases, it was Brilliant 100. So in Albany, Hayward, and Pleasanton, the default service until, uh, until January of this year was Brilliant 100. Uh, that has changed now based on both the fact that Brilliant 100 has closed and the fact that some cities like the city of Dublin and, and others that we'll mention as well have decided to make Renewable 100 the, the default service. It's not a mandate, it's just the default. So that's where people will be purchasing their energy unless they, they make a different option. So starting in January, the Renewable 100 will be the default option for all residential customers in Albany, Hayward, Pleasanton, and Dublin, except for customers that are on a discount program such as CARE, FERA, or Medical Baseline. The default service for those customers will be Bright Choice. So those customers will have a 1% rate discount, um, but more renewable energy compared to pg and &E standard service. But for all other residential customers, unless they choose otherwise, they will be on uh, Renewable 100 as the default. Other cities have, are also in the process of these types of transitions, these default transitions to Renewable 100. And so far those cities include uh, Berkeley and San Leandro. Berkeley and San Leandro are on a slightly different schedule. Uh, as you can see here, residential customers in those cities will be transitioning in March to Renewable 100. Um, and then commercial customers in those cities Will be transitioning in October. And I should also mention that there are other cities within our service area that are currently considering taking action in this form as well. So you, you will likely see more cities um, making this move. At this point, about half of the cities in EBC service area um, are either transitioning or in the process of transitioning to Renewable 100 as, as, the, default, as the default option. I will move us along. So there are some exceptions. I did mention already that residential customers on low income discount programs such as Care or Fera or the medical baseline discount, they will be on Bright Choice. They still have the option of choosing Renewable 100. So they can go ahead and, and do that by phone or online as we'll discuss in, in a moment. But the default service for those customers will be the Bright Choice service. And then customers that previously chose Bright Choice instead of Renewable 100 um, before December 22nd of 2021, they will stay on Bright Choice. So if there are customers 
who have already decided that they want to be purchasing their en energy for the most competitively priced option, that being the bright choice option, if they've already made that choice previously, we're not gonna change that. So those customers will remain on, on bright choice. Uh, customers who make the decision to go to bright choice after December 22nd of 2021, they still may see Renewable 100 charges on their bill for one or two billing cycles. Folks, customers can decide to change their options with EDCE at any time. It usually just takes one or two billing cycles for that to be implemented, depending on when that, that choice is made. I will move us along. So a familiar, a familiar image here, your PG&E bill. And we're gonna go, go through how you can identify which, which option you're on now and how to, how to change that option if you'd like to do so. So you can find your EVC service on the East Bay Community Energy Electric Generation Charges page of your PG&E bill. This is typically going to be page three of your bill. So the EVC service can be found under the bill period amount. So on the left, you can see a bright choice bill and that has the rate schedule ETLUC that, that those letters stand for uh, time of use rates that TOU is time of use. Um, and this matches the rate schedule for PG&E as well. So PG&E's delivery charges will see the customer here, the 1% right choice discount amounted to about cents in that line item there. Now I know this may not seem like much, but that 1% discount can actually add up a lot. Collectively, EBC customers have saved uh, about $29 million since EBC launched service in 2018. So collectively, our customers are saving about $10 million a year on that, what, what appears to be a pretty modest discount. So there's the bright choice there, right there is it identifies what rate schedule you're on. That identifies the bright choice discount for those that are on that, that rate plan. And then, now folks aren't gonna be on Brilliant 100 any longer, but it used to say Brilliant 100 on there for those that were. So if you look at, a, at an older bill, you might see that on there. And then for Renewable 100, so you'll notice that on Renewable 100 that there is, um, you'll see that additional penny per kilowatt hour charge there. I, I wanna, back up a moment and just remind folks that because EBCE is providing generation services that PG&E would have otherwise provided, these are replacement charges, uh, generally speaking. So it's not an additional charge for the, for the bright choice charges. It's a, it's a replacement charge. With Renewable 100, however, there is that additional penny per kilowatt hour. So that additional penny per kilowatt hour is the premium folks pay to have 100% renewable energy um, that's from California-based wind and solar. So you can see here, there's that additional charge of about $4.77. Um, again, for the typical customer, that penny per kilowatt hour is about $5 more per month. It's volumetric, so the more energy you use, the, the higher the premium will be. And Okay, so how to choose your service plan. So each, each of the cities that are in the process of transitioning to Renewal 100 as the default service, they have their own uh, customized website for this. So whether you're in Albany, Dublin, Pleasanton, or Hayward, there's a landing page for you and your city. Um, and pardon me. So if, you, if you'd like to choose a particular service plan, if you want something different than, than the default option, then you can make your choice online um, on these websites. And I'll go through that. Um, and you can also do this from ebce.org generally, and you'll want to select residence and then change your service. So 
So once you're on the Change My Plan webpage, you'll see a note about what you'll need to have available to make these changes online. The first thing you'll need is your pg e account number, which you can find at the top of your pg e energy statement. So right there on your bill. Um, we'll need those first 10 digits. You can ignore the number after the dash and also make sure that you know the name on the account and the zip code. So there you have it in the lower right. That's the account number. Um, and again, just make sure you're, you have the name on the account and the zip code that's associated with it. So the, the, the Change My Plan page allows you to select your choice. Um, it's gonna take you to a web form. You can highlight, let's see, I'll highlight Keep Me Here. Oh, excuse me. And the Keep Me Here option, if you're on Bright Choice today and you wanna stay there, you can indicate that using the Remain on Bright Choice. And uh, you'll also notice for folks in Dublin, since the original default service there was Bright Choice, it will say remain on Bright Choice. That's where you will, will want to click. Um, for folks in Pleasanton, Hayward, and Albany, since the default service was previously Brilliant 100, you'll be choosing Bright Choice. And if you can click on lower my bill, that'll give you Bright Choice, which is the, the lowest cost option. Um, if you if you've opted out previously, um, it's no additional cost to to return to EDC if you'd like to do so. Um, or if you've previously chosen Bright Choice and you'd like to upgrade to Renewable 100 actively, uh, you may do so on this page as well. And of course, if you want to opt out, you can go to switch to pg and &E and, and choose to opt out. Should mention there that while you can choose from among EBC's E's options at any time, it usually takes a billing cycle or two to process the request. If you opt out of EBC entirely and return to pg and &E, pg e may require that you remain with their service for a year before you can come back to, to EBC e service. So again, just to reiterate some important dates. So the last opportunity to choose Bright Choice and have and avoid the transition entirely was December 22nd. So if you haven't made that choice yet, um, then you will likely be seeing um, the initial renewable 100 charges coming up uh, next month in February. Uh, unless, of course, you're a care fair medical baseline customer or someone that previously opted out. So in January is when the transition actually occurs. And it occurs according to each individual electric account's meter read date. So this doesn't all happen at once. Each account is going to transition according to, to when the meter would be typically read that month. And so you won't notice any differences um, until February, then, unless you choose a different option, Feb your February bill will be the bill where you start to see those Renewable 100 charges for the first time. So common questions that we get about switching service. Can you switch to Bright Choice and then later try a Renewable 100? And the answer is yes. Uh, if, you, if you want to, to choose Renewable 100 after being on Bright Choice, um, you, you certainly can. Just like whether it's opting down or opting up, whatever you choose, in these cases on EDC side, it'll take one to two billing cycles for us to implement the change, but you can make that change at any time. There's no deadline for doing so. And so I know we've gone over this already, but just to reiterate, folks often wanna know how much more will it cost to be on the Renewable 100 service. For residential customers, this is typically about five to $7 more per month. It, it varies with usage because it is volumetric. It's a penny per kilowatt hour more. So during months of the year where customers use more energy, that premium will be a little higher, um, but where they use less, it'll be a little lower. On average, it'll be about five to $7 more per month. And if you'd like to get an estimate before you make the change, we'd be more than happy to help you with that. And um, it's pretty simple math. Um, but you're welcome to give us a call there at 1-800-699-3223. You can press zero to speak to a representative. Again, that's 800-699-3223. Or you can email us at customer-support at edce.org. We'd be happy to go over your bill with you. Please note, you will be receiving notifications in the mail um, and via email 
uh, about this transition. In fact, some folks may have already received those. So there were some, uh, the first notices went out last month. Uh, and so residential and commercial customers in uh, all the cities, Albany, uh, Hayward, Pleasanton, and Dublin, just for residential customers, they will be receiving two notices. One was in December, the next one will be coming this month. Um, we also are trying to get the word out through as many channels as possible. So we've been collaborating with all of our cities that are in these transitions. And um, so you may have seen something about this or will see something about this in your city's newsletter or updates from your Chamber of Commerce. Um, you might get um, emails from EDCE. You might hear about this through social media. We're also using print and digital advertising. The whole point of Community Choice Energy is for folks to know that they have options. So we want to make sure people know that there's a cheapest option, there's a 100% renewable option. Um, if folks want to opt out entirely, they can do so. The goal is to reach folks. And that's the end of our presentation. I'm going to go ahead and leave the, uh, the contact information there for folks. Uh, and with that, we can get to questions. Now, I'm not able to see the questions from where I am at the moment. Let's see here. Ah, uh, here we are. I see they've been coming in while I've been rambling. So the first question is, what is E6? So E, oh, I see that, oh, thank you. So my, my colleague, Kelly Brezovic has already addressed that question. Uh, but I can, I can uh, narrate for, for the benefit of the group. So the question was, what is E6, Bright Choice? The answer is E6, Bright Choice means you're on the E6 rate schedule following that particular type of time of use rate plan and uh, on EBCE's Bright Choice service option, if it says E6 Bright Choice. And uh, our other colleague, Dan Lieberman, elaborated a bit saying, E6 is the rate schedule for pg and &E and EBCE customers. Yeah, if, yes, if you're on the E6, you can, you have the same options as others. You can choose between Bright Choice or Renewable 100 and, and maintain that E6 rate schedule. I'm gonna move on. So why, the question here is why would I want to transfer to EBCE? Well, there are a lot of reasons and I'm realizing I might be catching up to some of the answers here, but uh, the reasons for wanting to purchase your energy generation from EBCE is that one, you'll be supporting more renewable energy resources uh, in the state of California. And two, your rate payer dollars will stay local. So the, the money that you pay on your electricity bill will be for the generation portion of your bill will be managed um, and invested by a, a local energy, a, a local agency. And the idea here is to make the energy economy more democratic. I didn't mention this during the presentation, but EBCE's board of directors is composed of locally elected leaders from each jurisdiction that we serve. So a city council member or a mayor or a county supervisor from each jurisdiction sits on our board and our meetings are open to the public. And those are the folks who approve our rates, programs, and policies. So it's a uh, far more democratic and transparent process than has been the case for most electricity customers here in California. I'll move on to the next question. What is the buy rate with Bright Choice versus PG&E during peak season? So as my colleague Dan answered, EBC rates mirror PG&E's rates. So our seasonal rates are the same as PG&E's except for that 1% discount on Bright Choice or that one penny per kilowatt hour premium on Renewable 100. So for, for the sake of simplicity, EBC's rates mirror PG&E's rates, um, both in terms of rate schedules and in terms of seasonal adjustments. The difference is in one, the rates, and two, the sources of the energy. In EBCE's case, the sources of the energy will be more renewable, a minimum of 5% more renewable for Bright Choice, and it's 100% renewable for Renewable 100. 
Okay, the next question is, so my choice for living in Hayward is the default renewable or bright choice, which will be more expensive? Yes, so if you're in Hayward, the, the default option is now renewable 100 for both residential and commercial customers, unless you're in, in a discount program such as care, fair, or medical baseline. So the, the, if you haven't made any choice or you're not in one of those uh, categories, then Renewable 100 will be your default service. Um, Renewable 100 is, is not cheaper than PG&E. It's a penny per kilowatt hour more, um, but Bright Choice is cheaper than PG&E. It costs less than PG&E, that is. It's at a 1% rate discount and you can choose that option at any time. Uh, and yes, we can make a copy of the PowerPoint uh, publicly available. We can uh, we can post that to our, a link to our website um, and make sure that, and we'll also have a recording of this um, on our website as well. I can see that my colleagues have answered this question as well. Mm -hmm. uh, here's a great question. How exactly does EVCE reinvest in the community? Thanks for this question in, in a myriad of ways. The most obvious way is in that rate discount for Bright Choice. So uh, EVC, part of what where EVC invests its net revenues is on keeping our Bright Choice option uh, the cheapest option available. So right there, there's an investment. I and mean, it's almost like a tax break, but in this case, it's a, it's a, a rate break. Uh, but then beyond that, in, in really exciting and innovative ways, EBC is investing in local programs. So I would encourage everyone here to go take a peek at our website. Um, we have local programs that involve developing uh, e electric vehicle charging infrastructure throughout EBC service area. We're partnering with several of our cities to expand access to uh, what's called direct current fast charging or DC fast charging, which turn uh, hours into minutes when it comes to charging electric vehicles. Um, we know that not everyone drives an electric vehicle, but it's to the general public's benefit if more and more uh, folks are driving electric vehicles because it helps not only reduce GHG emissions, but also to reduce local air pollution. So for anyone who's living near a roadway or a freeway or, or, a, or a refinery, it definitely helps to have uh, a cleaner alternative for transportation. In, a different, in addition to transportation electrification programs, we have uh, building electrification programs for energy efficiency to help uh, our customers install electric, electric appliances instead of gas using burning appliances. Uh, we have programs um, that are also designed to help our customers install batteries uh, at their homes in addition to solar. So we have what's called the Resilient Home Program, where customers can, um, can get rebates and discounts for installing solar plus battery storage at their home, which um, needless to say is, is quite handy when there are power outages, whether they're planned outages or unplanned outages, um, being able to store the solar energy and dispatch it when the sun goes down is, uh, is a really innovative program that EBC has been pioneering here in our service area. So that's just a, a sample of some of the ways in which EBC reinvests our, our customers' uh, energy bills in local programs. And I will move on. The next question is from a solar customer. I have solar, I have solar panels installed. Any difference if I don't do anything? I live in Dublin with Renewable 100. Thanks for the question. I'm, we have a lot of customers with solar in our, in our service area. Um, and no, this isn't going to change. This isn't going to change anything for solar customers, other than for any any energy that you use beyond um, beyond what you generate yourself, you'd be purchasing it at the renewable 100 rate. So, if you're a a net energy consumer, that that is that you um, you still purchase some energy rather than generating all yourself, what you purchase will be on the renewable 100 rate, unless you choose the bright choice rate. If you choose the bright choice rate, then whatever you purchase beyond what you produce will be at, at that rate. So for whatever you're purchasing, um, it will be either at a discount or a, or a slight premium, depending on which option you go with as a solar customer. 
Beyond that, it, it doesn't it doesn't change. Uh, but but I will say that there are also some benefits to being with EBC as a solar customer. Um, this may be in the weeds a little bit, but for for net energy metering solar customers, EBC true ups are a portion of the bill uh, on a monthly basis rather than waiting till the end of the year to do it. Oh, I, one other point I'll make there is if you are a solar customer um, and you're a net producer instead of a net consumer, um, you will also get that penny per kilowatt hour um, as, as, a, as a surplus generation credit. So if you are a net energy producer, it might not hurt to be on renewable energy because you'll be able to get that, that premium on, as a bill credit. And the next question was a similar question from a solar customer. Uh, but, the, but the question is, I, so I have solar and generate 100% of my own power. What benefit is there between pg and &E and Bright Choice? So if you're generating 100% of your own power, um, you're, you're not going to be, um, you're not gonna be seeing much of a difference because you're, you're purchasing, um, you're producing all your own power. Uh, so really the, the difference would be that, that timing of the true up. If you're with PG&E's energy supply, um, at least in theory, you know, if you've opted out of EBC for PG&E, even though you're ge generating all your own energy, your true up will be fully on an annual basis. Whereas if you were with EBCE, the generation portion would be on a monthly. Oh, and I can see Kelly has addressed that customer as well. Thank you, Kelly. Dan as well, thank you. Ah, and Dan also pointed out that uh, EBC contributed over $2 million in local COVID relief efforts. Um, and this was uh, th through, largely through grants, direct grants to um, our, our cities and the county direct grants to hospitals in our service area, as well as nonprofit organizations. And we also do offer sponsorships throughout the year. Um, and Dan kindly provided links for more information about that. And Kelly also, thank you for mentioning this. Kelly mentioned that uh, EBC recently hosted a net energy metering webinar, very similar to this one. So for, for those customers that are solar customers, um, you can go ahead and, and check that out on our website. Go to ebce.org slash NEM. And since net energy metering customers, you know, we really like to take their situations on a case-by-case -case basis since some customers produce more than they consume, some consume more than they produce. It's, uh, it's recommended that you go ahead and, and give our, our um, customer support reps a call and you're welcome to do this and we can review your specific scenario with regard to your account. So I, I, that number to call is 1-833-699-3223. I think earlier in the presentation, I may have said 1-800, so I apologize for that. The correct number is 1-833-699-3223. And our representatives are available from nine to five, Monday through Friday to address your questions. So the next question, it looks like it's a time of use question. The pg e plan I was on charged more during the hours of four to nine. Does this still apply with this change? Yes, so that 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 four to nine time of use, so that that's during the four to nine is now what we call the, the peak pricing period. So for customers that are on a time of use rate schedule and there was a, a, a previous transition to time of use rates um, for both, pg and &E and EBC customers. Uh, so unless folks opted out of that, for most of our customers, there's gonna be peak pricing from four to nine. This transition to renewable 100 as the default doesn't change any of that. So um, for folks who are on a time of use rate schedule, four to nine will still be the, the peak periods. If you're on renewable 100, that penny per kilowatt hour will still apply. So the, the peak period will be a penny per kilowatt hour additional, um, or if you're on Bright Choice, it'll be at a 1% discount. So four to nine is still gonna be the peak pricing periods. Um, and depending on whether or not you're on Bright Choice and getting a discount or on Renewable 100 and paying a premium, things will structurally still be the same there. 
So best to use best to use your energy outside of the hours of four to nine if you can do so. And and my colleague Dan also answered that there in the chat as well. So that takes us to the end of the questions I'm seeing so far. So with that, unless there are other questions, I think we may sign off here. Uh, again, if you haven't done so yet, please do uh, take a minute to answer our one question poll on where in the service area you're from, just so you can have a sense of who's tuning in from, from our member cities. And of course, if after this presentation, you come up with a question that, uh, that you'd like to ask, feel free to get in touch with us online um, via email. You can email us again at customer-support at ebce.org, or you can go ahead and give us a call at 1-833-699-EBCE. And we'll look forward to hearing from you. You can also get more details about our programs, our rates, our offerings to solar customers. All of that is available on our website as well. Please feel free to peruse it at your leisure. And in the meantime, please go ahead and enjoy the, what's left of the free solar energy that's shining down upon all of us right now.